Good afternoon. This is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society. And uh, I think I'm going to have to pause this. Okay, we're going again. Uh, as I said, I'm Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society, and I have a case here this afternoon that uh, uh, to me is most interesting, and it's just a world of this type of orthodontics out there that's going untreated uh, simply because uh, people just... Uh, they really don't know how to uh, do this, or they haven't even thought about uh, doing things like this. And you mix orthodontics with all types of, of dentistry, like restorative dentistry and uh, the temporal mandibular uh, joint problems go together. And then frequently you'll have uh, periodontal problems with the adults and missing teeth and tilting teeth and uh, anything you can think about. Uh, but a lot of these people want to get their teeth uh, straightened up and everything fixed up so they've got a good uh, you know, dentition there to go through life and it looks uh, much better. And there's a lot of this out there. And so if you learn how to do this, you will use it in your diagnosis. And most people uh, don't even think about this type of thing when they're in their diagnosis, uh, uh, telling people how what they need to do to fix something up. Well, this is a, a nice guy here. He's, I'm going to have to get this little pin going again. And uh, it, so we can draw on the picture uh, with it. Uh, Anyway, here he is, a very nice guy, and they're willing to go along with you and all sorts of things. And uh, his dentist that referred him in was a good friend, and, uh, and you want to work with other people and let them uh, come in and work with you. And if you have to get two or three people in, or maybe three or four uh, in on a case, I can have an oral surgeon, a periodontist, and a, uh, maybe an endodontist. And then, uh, you know, you do the orthodontic part and let these other people do their part of the work. So I'm going to kind of show you a little bit about that today. Uh, nice guy, smiles and everything. And if the best I remember, he had a a mild temporal mandibular joint problem and not a severe one, but his jaw is locked back, you see. He can't bring his jaw forward, so he chews and pushes the condyle back up in here. He'll push the condyle back up against that retrodiscal tissue, and uh, that's where you get the problem. The vast majority of this TMJ stuff is at the jaw position. And if you can get the jaw functioning in the mouth where it really wants to and it's comfortable there, many people don't. Uh, it'll cure their TMJ problem, even though they may have a stressful job like the guy I showed uh, here last week. had a very stressful job, but when we got his dentition where it didn't have any problem with that, he was able to cope with the stress he was under. Uh, and so this is something we have to uh, think about. And so now here we've got a deep bite case. There's no question about it. The lower teeth are way up in. I'll, I'll show you from the other side on the models here. And uh, they're way up in there. And it's a class two relationship. And so we need to bring the bottom jaw forward. Now he's wearing a 
partial that somebody made and the tooth is leaning some here and because I had to use that uh, partial in helping me open the bite, uh, I did not straighten this tooth out. I kept it or just left it like it was and so it's in the finished partial that day. Uh, and I regret not straightening that up but I would, couldn't have used this partially had to help me open the bite and it's very difficult to open a bite where you don't have any posterior teeth and on the other side we don't have any posterior teeth over there and that was the uh, stinger in this case right here you have to kind of uh, figure out something uh, to do that in uh, doing these, this type of case now, this was back in 1990, about 11, 13 of, of 90, so it's almost 91. And uh, here's the other side. And from the bicuspid back, we had nothing. And these teeth, he had just had these out not too long before this. And they would try to start down, so we have to work on that. Now, we've got to get force in this area to bring these teeth in the lower arch down. And so what we did, we put pads out here and let them chew in this area and left this alone. And these erupted up a little bit and I put something under these to keep them from dropping down while we got the lower anterior to level out the Right side of the mouth wasn't a big problem. The left side was a problem. And that's hard to deal with. And if you put a, 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 an implant in over here, then you can't move the blooming thing. Uh, so you could do that. And I kind of thought if I had this to do over again, I would try to get a implant back in here even though I would have to deal with it. I have to figure out exactly where I wanted it uh, before we got started. And you can work off of that and bring these teeth uh, down. Now we've got tads nowadays, and you can put tads in here and pull the teeth down and level the arch too. So there's a lot of different uh, approaches to it that modern stuff helps, uh, helps out a great deal. Now you look at the upper arch, there's no big problem with the little rotations and the things like that, this crown tooth and, uh, over here and this one, we're going to have to line it up and rotate some teeth and do some things like that, kind of change the whole shape of the upper arch and none of that is difficult, it's, it's part of the orthodontic part of it. Now the lower arch was formed and kept in shape with the partial that he had and we had to put up with this leaning tooth right here because this partial fit on that and this went back and we put pads on that to help uh, push that keep those upper teeth from dropping down while we were trying to intrude these right across here and it's a uh, this was not an easy case, and even though I think I know what I was doing, <laughs> but it was it was a tough uh, case to do that. Uh, now here is this old partial that the guy had, just a bar coming around behind here, and we're going to finish, and we'll make a partial that is a partial retainer as well as a partial denture that we put in there and you could do that several different ways I just uh, uh, the way we did it now looking at the models from the back side you can see where the lower teeth went up like this you see and we were able to bring this side down pretty good but it was this leveling in and then keeping these teeth from dropping was the problem that we had. And it turned out uh, relatively good. It, it's, it wasn't bad uh, 
it looked pretty good when we got through it. I was, I was amazed and uh, even proud of it. <laughs> so uh, now the jaw needed to come out where this cuspid was hitting here. So we're going to bring this jaw forward, and that's going to relieve the condyle back here that's in the fossa and it's pressing on this uh, temporal man to come in there retrodiscal tissue there where your synovial fluid is formed and it's got lots of vessels of blood supply and everything and you can't put a lot of pressure on that if you do if you've got somebody's got a tough one well they might be able to get by with it but most people will have some problems with them and you can just bring the jaw forward on these cases and 90% of them seem like this get over it. If you put the jaw out here, let the jaw close where it wants to, it'll be closing out here. And, uh, and then you make it where the teeth fit and interdigitate in the place where the jaw is comfortably uh, functioning there. All right, so here, both sides, this is not as far back as the other one right here, but this needs to come here, and uh, these are the teeth, you can see, need to fit together right there. Now, this is a first uh, uh, anorex that we took, and you can see this angle, and I feel bad that even since it's so simple for me to straighten one of these up and bring it forward in here that I if I hadn't had to use this partial, I probably should have just made myself a little uh, saddle deal with a wire or something to go across here and, and got rid of that uh, partial that he had. But uh, then the, the dentist I was working with may have made that, and I have to make them keep them happy while you're doing this. Uh, so I worked with him good. Now we did everything we could to intrude these teeth out here. We built a pad and I put a pad on the upper teeth that just stuck this on there temporarily to let him chew on that. And then we put a, where we, we took this out, of course, and then these teeth would come down and touch that acrylic and we had these in contact over on this side. And, we were able to level the uh, bite out really pretty good, you know. And so we would come in, we had an intruding arch wire on this. You see this wire right here was way up here. We brought it down, it's picking these up. And it was no problem to lower these over here, but they had nothing to work off on the back. So lowering this was a little more difficult on there. Letting them them up then. So uh, I'm kind of going over a bunch of these adult cases so that people will realize that you can do just almost anything if you can just think up in the ways of getting it done. You can move the teeth all over the place and it doesn't matter. This guy's 50 years old, something in there. I didn't pay one bit of attention to whether it was 50 or 25 or 18. And this old stuff of, you know, adults don't move and all this kind of stuff. I think you could straighten people's teeth into their 90s. Well, I'm, old, I'm that old now, and I think my teeth, would, I could straighten them out if I want, just wanted to, you see. So anyway, we'll pass that on now. And so here's the way we level this out. And we use this little bonded uh, block system up here, and he couldn't close anywhere behind this, and he had to chew his food here. And when you do that, you're biting in the front of the mouth, and there's nothing hits back in here. And then the condyle is up here. And so it's taking the load, and these teeth are taking the load, see? And... Uh, that's where, if you don't have a good jaw joint or a good uh, tissue back there, you have to be very cautious. You have to 
uh, put your load down in this area, you see, to uh, finish the case. Uh, so that's one thing. This guy had a pretty tough jaw joint as far as I can tell. Now he didn't have any problems. In it. All right, here's the old partial. You see, just this bar put around. A while ago it looked like it was sectioned, but that was this Panorex machine I have here to cut the center out. Uh, and so we added on to these teeth to put pressure on them to hold them in place and we put pressure on these to intrude them and we put something on the tooth over here to level this out and then we're going to discard this partial this whole thing and make a partial that is kind of a retainer and a partial at the same time and uh, you'll be able to do that or the, you can just have your lab man uh, do that and this is that pad down we were using those single brackets and this is the intruding wire and that was your regular uh, flexible wire in there when we we're opening the bite and it doesn't matter whether it's a top upper or a lower we can if you've got back teeth back there, we can get hold of them. We, we can open just very near anybody's bite. It doesn't matter. And uh, by using these blocks, I can open a, a dental bite on somebody that has a high angle or a open bite skeletally and not open it anymore and sometimes lower it uh, in the process of intruding the anterior teeth. Uh, be enough, put enough pressure that you can intrude these molars back here when normally they would be extruded to do this to the anterior part. It's going to have to put force on the lower and upper molars to push them together, and that's where people get in trouble with high angle cases. They push these together, and then that you open it a couple of millimeters back here, maybe four or five millimeters up in the front and out when they get that uh, open appearance there. That uh, does not add to the beauty of the finished product, I'll tell you. Okay, uh, here's just another view of that. Now, we, had, we used some class two elastic of force to bring this out. In other words, this jaws come forward this much. And when we move this forward, maybe we brought this back a little bit, but not much. And we have these little uh, deals here where we just put class two elastics over here. And it's hard to do the class twos over here where you don't have any teeth back in, in this area. You can hook and put your partial in and then wear a class two elastic off the partial and that works and i've done that uh, on some cases but uh, it's not ideal by a long shot now okay here this cuspid is in place and let me rush on to it we've opened we've got force on these teeth holding them up in that position and we'll make another partial for him where i did his dentist was working with me I had to show him exactly what I wanted to do and he was good went along with it and uh, uh, he made this partial and he sent it to the lab and had the framework made and he finished it out and we rotate this tooth and do all the good things you do in just a regular orthodontic case and there's the old partial and this is uh, 11, 13 of 90. That's the first cephalometric we took. And that's the first Panorex there was number one over here, see. And he was age 49 and two months at this time. That was 1990. And, uh, and I tell you, there's very little of this is caught on. I've been lecturing on this and talking and showing it everywhere and there's a very few people that I know that are 
doing this adult orthodontics like that. You have to work at it. And I'll tell you, this old idea of charging, he charges so much for orthodontics, that's like <laughs> he charges so much to fix your car, regardless of what it is. It's stupid. Uh, it, it's uh, These are tougher cases that take a lot more of your time and effort to go in there and do them. But there's a world of it out there. And uh, we should... Now, here's this old partial frame that we cut the panorex here. It looks like this was in two pieces, but it's not. Now, that's one we were going to discard, and we had it over this tooth, so I couldn't straighten this tooth up and use this. And I was working with this guy, and I think he made this, and, and I didn't want to throw it away or whack it off here and fix this tooth and pull it up and all that stuff. So I just left the tooth, and it, it'll work all right in that partial. Uh, but I wish I could have uh, straightened that tooth out. All right, there's where the uh, teeth met when we started. And here's where they were when we finished. In other words, we got the jaw, came up here. This may have fallen back some, but it didn't go back all that much. And now it's in class one relationship. And so you bring the jaw forward and let it close where it wants to. And that relieves most of these TMJ problems. If you don't have to go through all this rigmarole and all this stuff. I never used all that. And I went for 30 years with those TMJ things and I don't think it was have a single one. We didn't help in there. You can't do everything in there, but you can we helped everybody that I know of. And here it was 11 of 90 and there it is when we finished up in the case. There's the jaw position there, and there it is after we uh, positioned it. We put his new uh, partial back in the back of his mouth. And there it is there. There's the, he, <laughs> he definitely wears his retainer. <laughs> you will see the track like that in there. He may wear it. You would probably think you have a guy take it out and brush his gums up there real good every day uh, to keep it in good, good shape. Uh, and then he's got a bite plate. His lower teeth fit into that groove right there. And they can't deepen. And that saves you. I mean, that keeps the jaw in that position. This is 11 of 90. And there it is, 3 of 96. And he has no T of TMJ problem. These teeth are staying nice and straight. I think I didn't show you that partial. Let me see if we can go back to, to that. No. Okay, I've got a picture of the top of it. I know what it is. Oh, here it is. <coughs> now. This is just a metal framework that fits behind these teeth. And these teeth can't move much. I mean, this the anterior teeth are up here, and this is back here. So this is a partial and an orthodontic retainer at the same time, or a partial retainer and a partial part, partial. So that uh, maintains those lower anterior teeth. Well, there's a close-up. I knew I had a good picture of that. And so I had to show the, the dentist that was working with me on this. It was his patient. I showed him exactly what I needed, and he was able to do that for me. And uh, that kept those teeth in, in place. And here was the man. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> tell you there's a world of this type of orthodontics out there and there's just not too many guys that are doing this 
and you work as a team. And whatever you need to get in there, you get a paradonis, or you get some butts and endodonis, and uh, old surgeons. I've done a good bit with old surgeons. Uh, to uh, They would do part of it, they would do the other part. And uh, like this, I just worked with a guy who was a good restorative man, and we got this fellow fixed up. And if he takes care of that, he can have these teeth at his funeral. <laughs> and uh, I tell you, uh, I hope that many of you will join our little group here. I think I've got my picture all screwed up here. Uh, and uh, we're in the American Orthodontic Society. If you want to learn orthodontics, and that's, you can go in there with a, a general dentist or a pediatric dentist or a periodontist. We've had people that were in various specialties that want to learn some orthodontics. So thank you for listening, and I'm going to close this thing out now. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.